Hello, my fellow developers. We all know Postgres as a relational database for transactional use cases. But at the same time, Postgres can be used as a vector database. It has all the essential capabilities needed to build general purpose AI applications. And with this video, we are starting a series where I will show you how to use Postgres as a vector database. In particular, today you will learn the basics. You will learn how to use the PG vector extension to store vectorized data in your database and then how to work with this data to build some meaningful AI apps. All right, my friend, and we are going to learn Postgres vectorized and AI capabilities by building a sample application. We have a template of the login recommendation service that uses OpenAI and Postgres PG vector. If you don't know, OpenAI is the company behind ChatGPT that millions of us use daily. So imagine that you are traveling to San Francisco and you want to stay in the best location in the, in the nicest neighborhood of the city. So you would open this application, you would type in your user prompt, and then the service will return you a list of places to stay. So this is effectively what we are going to build. The initial version of the service already uses OpenAI Chat Completions API. With those APIs, we are going to take the user prompt and send it as is to the GPT-4 model back in the cloud. And then the model will return you a list of places where you might want to stay. However, with that implementation, you will notice that it's quite slow and it's not scalable. With that, we will bring in Postgres into the picture. Postgres is going to use the PG vector extension that enables you to store vectors and supports essential operations for the similarity search and other AI use cases. Let's dive in. I've already cloned this application uh, to my local laptop. So here is we have the back end, we have the front end, we have some SQL scripts that will be necessary to complete the implementation of the app. But let's start with the application properties file. You'll see that you need to have the OpenAI API key. So go ahead and register it and provide in this application settings. That's my key. And then this port number, you don't need to change it. That's the port number your UI is listening on. And then you have the database connectivity settings. I'm running Postgres on my local machine. So let's just start this application and see how it works. We are going to start with the backend. Let's start the backend. Yeah, it says that we can successfully connect it to Postgres. How about front end? Okay, it's here. That's the OpenAI chat mode that is already implemented and Postgres embeddings mode. That's what we need to support. I want to stay near their Golden Gate Bridge with a nice view of the bay. That's your preference. And then we're starting the search and take a look at this pack one who keeps eating those bubbles. It means that we have already sent the request to the OpenAI and maybe we're waiting for the response. And usually it takes 10 or 50 seconds to get a list of recommendations just because it, that's a massive model and it takes time to process and generate responses for you. But we've got what we ask. But still, we want this request to complete within a few seconds or under a second. And this is where we are going to use Postgres. But before, let's take a look at this implementation, OpenAI chat mode. Go to the application logic and under the backend, you will find this OpenAI chat service implementation. What it does, it connects to the OpenAI API and it will be using your OpenAI key. And then you are creating this request to the chat completions API. You are saying that, hey, ChatGPT, please be a helpful assistant who helps to find login in San Francisco and suggest at least three places. And then you are getting this response. You are going to use GPT-4 model, or you can use any other model that is available or affordable to you. And then you're getting those recommendations and you're returning them as a JSON array back to their front end. However, we want to use Postgres here because we want to boost the latency performance of our application. So my Postgres, uh, let me show it to you. Connecting to the Postgres instance. And the database is empty. We don't have any relations. So where will we get the data for our recommendation service? Go to the directory of this project. You will find uh, the following SQL script. And the SQL script creates a sample Airbnb table. Let's just copy and paste it. If you take a look, it comes with more than 100 columns. It's a very big table created, but certainly the table is empty. Also, if you Google really well, you will find some Airbnb sample data set that can be placed into this table. 
it's already here also under this project all we need to do is to preload it let's use the copy command we are preloading it from the location where your project is it's under the following location on my laptop there's the command okay we've got more than 7500 airbnb places available for rentals in san francisco that's a wonderful data set for our experiments with ai let's take a look at uh, a few descriptions of several airbnb properties let's select our name and description from airbnb listing three of them yeah it's not readable we need to enable the following mode so here is uh, one of them, it's the name of this property, and here is the description. There is detailed information, such as the locations to some hallmarks in San Francisco, if you scroll up. Here is another uh, description for another property, and this description column is a wonderful choice for our vectorized data. So what we want to do next, we want to read descriptions of all of those Airbnb properties, and we are going to use OpenAI Embeddings API, to generate vectorized representation for these descriptions and we are going to put those vectors back into our database that's our next step let's enable the pg vector extension so pg vector extension enables the similarity search in postgres it allows you to store vectors and it provides basic operations such as the calculations of collision or cosine distance that is necessary for the similarity search I'm running Postgres in a Docker container with this extension installed and all I need to do is to create extension vector. It's done. And then I want to change the structure of my Airbnb table. I need to add a column that will be holding the vectors for my description. Alter table Airbnb listing add column. Let's name it description embedding and the data type is vector and then you need to provide the dimension. The dimension needs to be 1536 if you're using OpenAI embeddings model. If you're using a different model, then the size of the vector will vary. So we've got everything ready. So now we need to implement our data generator. For that, you can jump back to the backend folder and find the following file, embeddings generator file. So what happens here, we have some skeleton, we will open connection with the OpenAI, we will connect to the database, and next we need to read all those descriptions from the database and generate embeddings. How do we do that? It's simple. Uh, let's read all the rows, await client, we only need ID of an Airbnb property and its description. Once you got this data, uh, let's read all the rows one by one. And then for every row, we need to send the request to the OpenAI embeddings model. Embedding response, we are making a call to the OpenAI Embeddings Create API endpoint. And here is, we need to provide the model name. The name of the model is Text Embedding ADA002. And you need to pass your textual representation of the description that we read from the database. Once you get it back, you need to store this information in back into Postgres. For that, let's do this. Query, we want to update, not to insert Airbnb places. We know that the name of the column is description embedding. We have just created it and we need to pass this embedding response it's here. And also we need to wrap into these square brackets. And we do this for the row with the following ID that we also read before. And we are going to do this for every Airbnb property. And then let's generate the total count. Excellent. Let's check if everything is accurate. No, the name of the table is wrong. Airbnb listing. And Airbnb listing needs to be here. So now with that, hopefully, fingers crossed, we need to start this data generator. Let's start the backend. Okay, we successfully connected to Postgres. And right now what the application does is going to generate embedding for every description of every property and it's going to store this into the description embeddings. It will take some time. While it's happening, you actually can see what's the progress. Let's see how many embeddings do we already have in our table from Airbnb listing where description embedding 
is not null. And you can see that this number is changing. So let's uh, take a little break and in a few minutes we will get the data set ready for the next step. Finally, my friend, we generated embeddings for all of the properties. Excellent. You can see this number. And this number will be a little bit uh, lower than the total number of properties because uh, not every property has description. So we have 24 properties that don't have any description, which means that they will be excluded from the search. Now let's take a quick look at those description embeddings. Let's query name, description, and description embedding column from Airbnb listing, limit three. And this is a large vector, right? It's, if you remember, the size of every vector is 1,536. That's uh, the size of the vectors returned by OpenAI. And here is, you will find this description and the name of this Airbnb property. And then if you scroll up, you will find another vector. Then you will find another description and another property name. So we've got all the data in here. So now what you want to do, we want to implement this logic. We have this prompt that presently uses the OpenAI chat completion CPI, but we want to implement this Postgres embeddings mode. If you do the search right now, you will not find anything because we need to implement this. Again, going back to our project and here is, we will find this Postgres embeddings code. So what happens here? We also going to connect to Postgres. We are going to use OpenAI. Now, search places. This method is being called from the following file. When you provide the user prompt and if you want to use Postgres, then we are going to make a call to the search places method. And here is we providing three parameters. The first one is user prompt. This is what we are typing in the UI. Uh, that's the similarity between the user prompt and descriptions of your Airbnb properties. It needs to be within a range between zero and one. The closer to the one, the better, which means that it will be more similar to what user is asking for. And three is the number of listings and a number of recommendations you want to have. Let's implement this. First, we can actually go ahead to the embeddings and copy paste this because we have to use the same model. So let's copy and paste it here. But in this case, yeah, this OpenAI is created differently. We are creating this one and we have the user prompt. All right, wonderful. That's user prompt and that's the property. Next, we want to find all those Airbnb places that correspond to my user prompt. How do we do that? Again, we need to run some SQL. Let's get rows, wait this client. So what does it suggest to us? We are selecting, now we no longer need ID, but we need name of the property. We need to have description. We need to want the price. We need to know the price. Next, let's do this. We are querying this from Airbnb listing, where the distance between the description embedding and our first argument, which is gonna be the vector of user prompt is as follows. We want to do actually the similarity. We need to subtract the distance between our description embedding and the embedding of user prompt. And we will get that number between zero within the range of zero and one. And we need to use the cosine distance because this operator is the Euclidean distance, which is good for the use cases when you know exactly two points and you want to calculate the distance between two points. But when you're building AI applications that use large language models, LLMs, then it's better to use cosine distance. And the cosine distance is just the angle between your vectors. To calculate the cosine distance, all you need to do is to change your query to the following operator. And then the similarity needs to be bigger or equal to what your user provided, okay? And next we want to order by description embedding. Yeah, why don't we return the similarity here? You can copy and paste, it's gonna be a similarity. We want to print the similarity in the UI from Airbnb listing. Uh, we are ordering by similarity, descending, and also we want to get only three properties. So here is yeah, embeddings data, representation, matching threshold, and that's the threshold uh, that will be compared to the similarity between the description embedding. And we are going to get only three of them. That's done. Finally, we need to convert those rows to the places, right? How do we do that? Yeah, Copilot helped us here. We are going to query every row and then we are going to add all the informations to the places. And also we have similarity, if you remember, similarity in the row similarity. Wonderful, you made it.
So let's check it out. Let's restart our backend. Let's go back here. And wow, just try to count. It just takes less than a second. Take a look at this. We managed to connect to the OpenAI. We used embeddings model to generate a vectorized representation for this user prompt. And then we compared that user prompt embedding to their description embeddings of our Airbnb properties. That's how easy it is to use Postgres for that. Why don't we run another request? Let's say that I want to stay near the cell for tower and some coffee shops. Okay. And you're getting different locations that correspond to this user prompt. All right, my friends, and these were the basics. That's how easy it is to use Postgres as a vector database to build some meaningful AI applications. But the story doesn't end here. In the next videos, you will learn how to optimize these applications further. Because let's face it, presently the application stores only 7,500 Airbnb places. But what if your application stores millions and millions of embeddings? then you would need to optimize it further by using specialized indexes or by using a distributed Postgres cluster. And that's what I'm going to show you in the next video. So if you're interested, stay tuned, like this video and subscribe to get notified about content on Postgres and other databases. Bye bye now.